in perfect order, each dressed in white. They came marching from every corner of the state with their banners and their music. They came in rattletrap boards, in trucks, on trolleys. They came from the Midlands, the part of the country where militia and gunmen have been terrorizing the miners for the better part of a year. As they approached the capital, the women broke ranks and surged like a sea of white through the open space before the building and up the steps. How is the strike to be won? Can it be won by injunctions and political maneuvering? Or with our insistence on militant policies and action? This is, we were not ladies, we were women. A look at the life of Agnes Burns Week and her role in the Illinois Mine War. The epidemic violence in Christian and Franklin counties threatened the safety of their communities and the success of the strike. The progressive miners hoped that the newly inaugurated governor, Henry Horner, would intervene to protect their rights. Only a few weeks after the Camerlato murder, the Illinois Women's Auxiliary at the Progressive Miners of America organized a mass march to the state capitol in Springfield to deliver their demands. An estimated 10,000 miners' wives marched, led by Agnes Burns Week. Agnes's grandnephew, Sean Burns. One of the things that the Women's Auxiliary was very good at was organizing themselves and organizing public demonstrations. And probably the ultimate rally occurred in January of 1933 when 10,000 miners' wives marched on the state capitol to petition the governor. come to the seat of government in our state to seek redress from the oppressive and intolerable conditions in the coal fields of Illinois. When it was no longer possible for our men to have a voice in determining the condition under which they worked, they broke away from that organization and established a new union that is responsive to the wishes of the rank and file. A reign of terror resulted in which officials of the old union, the coal corporation, county and municipal authorities, and even the state joined, clubbing, tear gassing, shooting, killing our people, bombing our homes, making it impossible for us to assemble or to enjoy any of the rights to which the constitution of this nation entitled its citizens. We respectfully petition you not only is our welfare at stake, but our faith in the ability and willingness of government to protect and serve us is menaced. Dare you fail us now? The women were dressed in white. They had red scarves. They, they had their progressive miners uniform. A powerful visual statement. But I think it also shows though, just that this was a life and death struggle for these women and for these men. I mean, this was literally, you know, people who were having a hard time coming up with the means of which to feed their families. Agnes later wrote in the auxiliary's first annual report. This great march aroused public sympathy and increased the prestige of the new union as nothing else had done. It proved to the public that the PM of A was the union of the miners' choice and put the issue of civil liberties to the forefront. It showed our women what organized action can do and what power lies in their hands. It has been called the greatest women's march in labor history.